Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a Victoria man in trouble with the law accused of stalking a woman. Wednesday marks the one year mark since the Uvalde Elementary School massacre. And in Calhoun County, a 46 year old man who pleaded guilty to multiple sex crimes involving children and violated his parole will face maximum time in prison. Hope you had a good weekend. We were looking at a week with virtually no significant rain for about seven days. So all of a sudden, very kind of early summer. We'll be talking about that coming up. They're bling bling. That's coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. A Victoria man faces charges of stalking. Police arrested 66-year-old Wood Brown Sunday night near Lorenin Airline. He's accused of stalking a woman several times over the weekend starting Friday morning. Bond was set at $30,000. In Calhoun County, Jason Janiwer admitted to violating the terms of his probation. He was sentenced to the maximum amount of time for each offense. He'll serve 62 years in prison. In April, the 46-year-old pleaded guilty to a number of sex crimes involving children. Daniel Mendoza of Goliad was serving life in prison for a double shooting. It happened in June of 2019. Mendoza shot Nathan Cortinez and Brianna Bexley on May 11th. He was found unresponsive in his cell. He died by suicide. The couple was shot at a close range. Their infant son was in the back seat and not physically harmed. The Office of Inspector General was notified and will investigate the death. And so this brings us to your viewer poll. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. The question is, should there be, should there be more mental health health resources for inmates in custody, yes or no. We take a look at these results and 76% say yes, 24% stand at no. We want to keep on hearing your opinion. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote and we will have an update on 25 News Now at 10. For 24-7 mental health support in English or Spanish, call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration's free helpline at 1-800-662-4357. You can also reach a trained crisis counselor through the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline by calling or texting 988. Here is the current river flood warning posted for the crossroads from the National Weather Service in Victoria and Calhoun counties. A river flood warning in effect until early Tuesday morning for the Guadalupe River near Bloomington. That's a good sign. That's our last river flood warning after That's all the right. rain from the weekend before. And now I believe we're going to have a dry week. Is that right, Mac? Mm. Yeah, things are looking pretty good. Uh, so uh, absolutely right, Don. Uh, this is probably our last warning. It'll probably be gone by tomorrow. And so all of the rivers are back uh, where they're supposed to be. Uh, right now we're looking at lots of sunshine, pretty clouds out there with an 86. It's going to be feeling very much like early summer because through the Probably the entire week we're looking for sunny and warm weather, somewhere around 90 degrees. But what about Memorial Day? We'll be taking a look at that coming up in just a moment. Back to you. Mac, thank you. New details emerge about an eight-year-old girl who died in U.S. Border Patrol custody. Anita Death Alvarez became unresponsive on what was at least a third visit to medics on Wednesday at a Border Patrol station in Harlingen. According to officials, she later died in a hospital. Alvarez, who was born with a heart condition, is the second child in recent weeks to die in custody of immigration. Officials say a 17-year-old boy from Honduras died last week in Florida. She had been detained with her parents and siblings for over a month, despite rules that instruct agents to hold migrants no longer than three days. Dallas police looking for a gunman who shot and killed a security guard on Friday. Yeah, investigators say the security guard confronted the man after he allegedly broke into several vehicles in a parking garage. That's very disturbing. It's the second time this month that a DFW security guard lost their life while trying to protect the public. On May 6, 20 year old Christian LaCour was one of eight victims killed by an active shooter at the Allen Premium Outlets. Late Friday afternoon, 34 year old Ad Alberto Santiago met a similar fate. Police say Santiago was trying to stop a man from breaking into cars and a parking garage in Preston Center West. Security footage shows a gold sedan pulling out of a parking space on the top level of the parking garage with a security guard hanging out of the driver's door. The sedan crashes. A few moments later, you can see Santiago running behind the car 
and collapsing. The car speeds off. Police later found it abandoned over 12 miles away in a closed business parking lot on the 2200 block of North Cockerell Hill Road. It's terrible. I mean, the guy was trying to do the right thing, the security guy, and he ended up, you know, losing his life trying to help protect us and keep us safe. Carmen Coker moved to the area just a few weeks ago. I'm a little more cautious than I used to be because you hear about it happening so much more frequently. Jose Vega makes a trip to the shopping area about twice a month and after learning what happened here one day before, he says his biggest concern is for his family. I do have my daughter and uh, we do come here uh, frequently so just if just to know that it, it is a little bit scary. An employee at a nearby business told WFAA they remember hearing six gunshots late Friday afternoon. She also said that Santiago had been patrolling the area for the past few months and described him as someone who seemed kind and dedicated to his job. Those who live nearby report seeing a rise in vehicle break ins. Wednesday marks one year since the Uvalde school massacre on May 24th, 2022. We all remember when a lone gunman stormed Grava Elementary and killed 19 children and two teachers. There's no events planned for the one year mark, but Parking was banned in the city's main plaza, Rava Elementary, the Healing Uvalde murals, and the Civic Center parking lot. This out of respect for the victims' families. Now those families are still demanding accountability for the failed police response to the mass shooting. Uvalde's mayor held a media briefing today. In a year's time, they still don't have answers to simple questions that they should have gotten. I mean, I'm the mayor. I've been one year. I haven't got one briefing from anybody from day one. Not one, nor has the county judge. That's very frustrating. So if it's frustrating on us, you can only imagine what it does to them. There are no city sanction events planned for the entire week. This includes the cancellation of Tuesday's scheduled Uvalde City Council meeting. The demolition of the site where 21 people were killed last May and Uvalde has been pushed due to a court order. KXAN reports the Uvalde School District's interim superintendent, Gary Patterson, said Monday morning he cannot say when crews will tear down Robb Elementary School because of what he called litigation. Patterson said it's related to a court order filed by District Attorney Christina Mitchell there in Uvalde, but he said he hopes this will be resolved by this summer. That's right. Now let's go to Washington, where even as the deadline to a government default is fast approaching, a separate team of negotiators for the White House and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy ended their talks today with no deal in place. That seems to be clearing a path for the direct face-to-face -face talks between President Biden and the Speaker to negotiate a debt ceiling agreement with only days left to avoid a global economic catastrophe. Ahead of this face-to-face -face meeting with President Biden attempting to avoid a default on the nation's debt, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy walking into the Capitol this morning criticizing spending by Democrats. We're going to spend less than we spent last year. That is why we go from crisis to crisis to crisis. But during his press conference in Japan yesterday, the president laid the blame for the debt ceiling crisis at the feet of Republicans. It's time for the other side to move their, from their extreme positions because much of what they've already proposed is simply, uh, quite frankly, unacceptable. Republicans say they will not raise the debt ceiling until the president agrees to deep spending cuts, reclaiming unspent COVID funds, imposing stricter work requirements for certain federal aid programs like food stamps and immigration provisions, as well as an increase in military spending. Meanwhile, sources say the White House made an offer that would limit military and domestic spending, affecting programs that provide aid to education, housing, and scientific research. Biden also says he wants to raise taxes on large businesses and wealthy Americans. A team of negotiators for the White House and Speaker McCarthy met for three hours early on Monday, but ended their talks without any deal. But one of the Republican negotiators expressing slight optimism. We know the deadline, we know the challenge, uh, people are working in good faith. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. will run out of money to pay its bills by a hard deadline of June 1st. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington.
On the last week of the state legislature, a Texas Senate committee revises the school funding bill in a last-minute bid to put in the voucher program. The Texas Tribune reports some House members are furious at the new version and vow not to let it become law. It's an attempt to avoid a special session after Governor Greg Abbott threatened to call for one if he did not get a school voucher bill he liked. Over 230 arrests were made during the annual Jeep weekend in Galveston County. KTRK reports most of the charges were misdemeanors, such as disorderly conduct and public intoxication. Thirteen of those charges were felonies. Since Thursday, 60 calls for EMS were made, and 40 people were taken to the hospital for various minor injuries. Two people were taken to the University of Texas Medical Branch to be treated for critical injuries. Stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, a Houston area resident spots an 11-foot alligator down the street from his house. And Global Pharma healthcare eye drops have been linked to four deaths and caused 14 people to lose their vision. We have those details straight ahead. of people with highly drug resistant bacterial infections linked to contaminated eye drops have risen to 81 and four people have died. The CDC says the 81 cases include 14 people who were blinded and four others who had their eyeballs surgically removed. While the infections have not been definitively traced to these artificial tears right there on your screen, the over the counter brand was found to be common among those infected. The CDC and FDA urge people to stop using them as well as to two other eye products, Delsam Farmers Artificial Tears and Delsam Farmers Artificial Eye Ointment. All three products are manufactured by Global Pharma Healthcare. They're now recalled. An alarming sight for a Houston area resident who spotted an 11 foot alligator down the street from his house. Yeah, he called police who kept an eye on the reptile until a trapper could get there and capture it and haul it away. It took three hours for a professional trapper to catch this alligator who made a visit to the Quail Valley neighborhood in Missouri City overnight. Cornelius Gregg Jr. says he spotted the creature while driving around 1230 this morning. He was just a few houses away from home. He was ginormous. He was huge. So I've never seen one that big up close. Gregg says gator sightings are common in this area. In fact, he just spotted a five foot gator in his backyard pool last month and has come across about seven gators during the last decade he's lived here. That's why he knew exactly what to do. Uh, one, I didn't get out of my car. Two, I called the police and let them handle it. 
I'm not an animal guy, so I just let the experts handle it. He says police kept an eye on the gator until the trapper could arrive. Within the span of an hour, Greg says the alligator didn't appear very aggressive and only moved about three yards. The trapper tells us the gator weighs about 1,200 pounds and a record truck had to be called to help transport the creature out of the neighborhood. The trapper estimates the gator is a little more than 11 feet long and is about 85 years old. He kept throwing the rope off, throwing the towel off, huh. snapping his jaws at me, swinging his tail at me. But an alligator this easy could uh, knock my leg off real easy. The city of Kyle in the Austin area tried to break the world record for people with the same name over the weekend. Unfortunately, the city of Kyle fell short of its goal with the 1,800 of its same named Kyles. City leaders hosted the gathering of the Kyles world record attempt Sunday afternoon at the Kyle Fair Textravaganza. The current Guinness world record for the same name holds over 2,300 Ivans. It's funny, uh, somebody yelled out Kyle, was trying to get their somebody's attention, and all these people turned around. It was pretty funny. Kyles came from all over the Lone Star State to gather and celebrate at Lake Kyle Park. Other Kyles had traveled from as far away <laughs> as Hawaii and Canada. But Mac, I know why they didn't break the record because they didn't have it at Kyle Field. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a hundred thousand right there. You know, I mean, <laughs> that would have been now that. But well, see, it defeats the the purpose of Kyle Texas doing the event. So yes. now. The, our version would be all the Victorias in Texas should yeah. come to Victoria. Oh, yeah. There we go. We yeah. have, maybe we'll be in the Guinness <laughs> Book of Records. Imagine that. Pretty good looking afternoon out there. We're looking at 86 degrees. He dropped a degree there in the last hour. We're looking for lots of sunshine and relatively dry weather all the way through the week. Now, there is a glimmer of a chance, and I'll tell you why. All that coming up in just a moment. everyone hope you had a great weekend we got up to 87 today and temperatures are going to be looking more and more like the, where they're supposed to be which is now our average is 88 so we're going to be hovering at, at normal temperatures but if you remember last year i remember what was it memorial day it was just brutally hot this one you know just regularly hot how about that we're looking at uh, abundant sunshine over the area we did have a couple thunder showers that popped up uh, in the palacios area up toward bay city out there nothing significant uh while we're having a nice time well the old texas uh what we i call the west texas dry lines big line right about here this is the humid air and this is a very very dry air and so that's the focusing system for these thunderstorms now as uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago uh, this sneaks thunderstorms into Texas. They pop here late in the afternoon, and then they drift with the upper winds, generally wherever the upper winds are going. Well, these upper winds at this point are northeast, so that would take them away to Dallas. But let me just show you this. 
while we have uh, just one river flood warning left in the area, uh, we've got severe thunderstorm watches already up in the Panhandle and all the way down into the uh, Big Bend area. Now, as I mentioned, the winds will generally drift this activity to the east. And so if it's moving to Dallas, okay, it doesn't affect us. But over the next couple of days, the winds may tr shift to the northwest which kind of puts us in the path. And I'll show you what that means. Here's the Guadalupe River at Bloomington. And uh, as you can see, we were, we, you know, minor, moderate, and major flooding. At major flooding, we were right at the edge there. If we'd gone another foot over that, we would have had a lot of lowland flooding. But now everything's getting better. As you can see right about here, that's today. Tomorrow, it'll be dropping out of the minor flood stage. So we'll be back and have all our rivers uh, within their banks and should be okay because I don't see anything significant in terms of heavy rainfall over the next seven days. So here's the dry line. as And you can see how thunderstorms pop in that area and then they travel to the west. Now here's a Tuesday, right? Now watch this on Wednesday, line of storms and it travels east. Now at this point in time, it's not over us, but it's pretty close. And I, like we got a bit uh, last week uh, where one of these storms just kept going. And so we're gonna just have to watch it. There's a low grade chance of an afternoon thunder shower triggered way out in far west Texas. And the good news about it, as they develop, we can watch them track over the area. Now let's get our eyes focused. This is Florida right here. This is the Caribbean right about here. And you've got these yellow lines. These are area, this is mean uh, surface pressures. So right here over the Bahamas, we actually have an area of low pressure. Now this is not forecast to become anything like a tropical storm, but it is an area of disturbed weather and it is drifting to the Northwest. So Bermuda is gonna get some uh, significant rain out of it. It is not expected to become a tropical storm, but at this time of the year, nothing moves in the Atlantic without me telling you about it because I want you to have as much of a heads up as possible. Uh, things are looking good out on the local waters because winds are down to less than 10 miles an hour. It's two foot uh, seas and smooth bays. If there's anybody still want to go fishing, it's a good time. Sunny and warm, low grade 20% Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Weekend is looking nice and warm, about 90 degrees, and there's only a 20% chance as we get to Memorial Day, so we'll certainly be watching it for you as we plan on out. Here's your um, QR code. Yeah, we got a new graphic. It really threw me for a loop earlier. Uh, so it's a real pretty graphic, and we want you to scan that box with your phone, and that will put your, um, it'll take you to app the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, and it'll give you Crossroads today and put it right on your cell phone. We'll be back with Mark a little bit later on. Right now, we'll toss it over to Karina. Thanks, Mac, and I hear Sports Director Gina Perez. Thanks, Karina. There are only three Crossroads ball teams playing for a chance at the title. That's coming up after the break. At a crossroads, the Hallettsville Brema baseball team is preparing for the biggest game of the year as they will have a win or go home game against CC London. The Bremas had late game heroics from Jorion Wilson, who hit this three run bomb 
which would be the deciding factor for the game. Now they will play in a winner go home game against CC London. That game will be Thursday, May 25th in Kennedy. The Shiner baseball and softball teams are dominating the ball diamond as well. The Comanches beat Weimer in the regional quarterfinals. In game one, Shiner won 7-0. And in game two, the purple and gold pulled off the sweep to win 2-0. Now the regional semifinals are headed there for the Shiner Comanches. They will take on the Mumford Mustangs with Game 1 starting on Wednesday at 7. Game 2 and 3, if needed, will be Saturday and all games will be played in LaGrange. The Shiner Lady Comanches are on fire and looking to keep the momentum rolling. Shiner is coming off a 9-3 victory over Granger in the regional semifinal game to advance to the regional finals. In the contest, Shiner hit four home runs. Two were by sophomore Kaylee Bedeker. Now the Lady Comanches are taking on the Weimar Wildcats in a best of three series. Game one is Thursday at 7 o'clock at TLU, Texas Lutheran University in Seguin. Game two and three, if needed, will be Saturday at Texas State University. As area teams compete for titles out on the diamond, one local team has already done that. Some sports reporter Zach Brown has more. <laughs> While many athletes were busy winning gold last week in Austin, there's another group of athletes that may have flown under your radar called Chosen. This is a softball organization for 14, 12, and 10 U kids that not only wins rings, but brings a winning mentality to the plate. Developing mentally is what we kind of focus, what I focus on a lot as a coach. A lot of like all my basic skills that I needed and a lot of, you know, mentally, everything that I needed for high school. There's a lot of new things that I've learned in high school, a lot of new accomplishments, but a lot of it came from Chosen. Chosen helped me a lot because um, my mentally is really, I had a bad attitude. And I kind of got better at that by, you know, working with my team and not getting angry. As these kids go from elementary school and grow into young stars, one assistant coach says he just wants the kids to remember where they came from and take lessons with them besides just softball. For them to grow as individuals, grow as a, as a team, unity, learn how to play together, get along together, and overcome obstacles. They have two girls getting ready for high school seasons, one who just finished her freshman year at Quero and another who is attending Victoria West. They also have girls who will compete in nationals this summer. Regardless of skill level, they are willing to take anyone. All they ask is for you to be committed. We feel like when you do tryouts, you're telling the kid that they're not good enough to play on a team and we develop kids so if you want your kid to develop and you want to play softball and you want to be good come to Chosen. Now if you're interested in signing your kid up you can call Pamela Edwards at 361-894-2669 and search Chosen Softball on Facebook. Well that's your sports Don and Karina back to you. Thanks Gina we're back in a moment on the weekend before the Indy 500 another big race happening in Wisconsin. Would ticks 
Yes, the 42nd Annual International Wood Tick Race was held over the weekend in Wisconsin. All the wood ticks are put in a center <laughs> circle. There are oh. two ticks that race to the outer circle. Whoever gets there first wins. The other one gets smashed. Over oh. 160 ticks were <laughs> smashed this year. The grand showdown pitting husband against wife. The last tick standing was named Tilly, and Jill Ladwig got the winning mallet trophy. Oh. And I bet her husband, mm. because he lost, was ticked off. Oh, you don't oh. want to you don't want to lose that race, do you? No, no, I mean, you don't. No. There's, yeah, there's the happy winner. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Well, mm. folks, uh, we've got some great looking weather for this week. Generally on the dry side, no big stormy weather expected through the weekend and that's good. We should be about 89, 90 degrees through most of the week. The 20% you see there is because of West Texas. They'll, they're still popping storms and we're watching them carefully to make sure they stay over there and don't get into our area. And of course it was a great weekend in the coastal bend. Why? It was Warriors weekend and we've got that's some photos right. to show you and, and Donna and Karina, you know, uh, amazing stories of every one of these people that came in from out of uh, the region. From Washington, like Washington you said, Washington State, all over the state. North Carolina, they came and of course all the captains volunteered their boats. Thank you to them. Uh -huh. The community went out and did a great job volunteering and putting this whole thing up. But they, you know, they talk about how important it is to feel that the love, you know? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. And, and don't we know how important that is? And so that you guys did it is a, says a lot about you, too. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. That's right. Great point there, Mac. Yeah. Thank you, Mac. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm so glad we, we covered it that yeah. Warriors weekend. We actually waved to them while they yeah. were. Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, thanks for joining us. Remember, we're streaming 24-7 Crossroads Today Plus. That's right, and we hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.